Greetings everyone, uh, another replay for you. This time it's an artillery replay and we are in the tier 4 British artillery piece, the birch gun. Or, as my girlfriend calls it, the bitch gun. So, is there anything about the bitch gun that's... <laughs> birch gun, sorry. That's particularly distinctive? Well, it has a fully rotating turret. Uh, this makes it only the third artillery piece in the game to have that feature, the other two being the Tier 3 Russian Su-26, which, as of patch 8.6 or so, got hit with the nerf bat so hard it's basically worthless. And the other is the Tier 10 French artillery, uh, sorry, the other two are the Tier 9 and 10 French artillery. Um, the Tier 10, of course, also having that autoloader. So it's quite a rare feature on an artillery piece, um, and so there's bound to be a trade-off. And with the birch gun, the trade-off is twofold. One, as you can see, it's not particularly fast. I should actually point out with this replay, I don't have the top suspension. This is the stock suspension. But either way, it's not very mobile. Um, second thing, I mean, okay, it's an artillery, take it for granted. It has no armor, it has no health, so let's just move on from that. But it's, it's not a small target, so it's reasonably easy to hit. Um, also, the gun. The gun fires quite quickly. So it's, it's, it's the same gun that you get on the Sexton at Tier 3. And it's basically, it's the artillery version of the gun that you get on the Electo. The um, last gun you unlock on the Electo. Um, and it's not a bad gun, but as you can see, the damage per shot is pretty anemic. So I just hit that KV-1 for 90 odd damage. And you're going to see this throughout against tier 5, 6 heavy tanks. You do like... You're happy if you do 90 damage per shot, to be honest. I mean, that's the front of a tier 5 TD, 92. Um, what it does have going for it though, apart from the turret, uh, what the gun has going for it is a high rate of fire. It's not too inaccurate. So what you can do is keep someone pretty much perma-tracked, um, or at least close to, and that's pretty much what I'm going to do with this KV in a sec. Critical hit. Yeah, nine damage. Um, but you can keep him tracked, other people will shoot the guy up, and you'll of course get the assistance damage. So I haven't actually had that many games Critical in this hit. thing. Uh, this is only my ooh, second game that I've played in it, but I'm kind of liking it actually. Um, yeah. It's quite nice. Because I used to have the SU-26. I played it um, a little bit, but the last time it got nerfed, they took away that top gun, and it just became... Oh, painful. You know, you would, you would do no damage to most of the things you shot at. Your only value was in keeping people tracked. And it just wasn't very fun. So I sold that and bought the next one. The SU-5. Anyway, um... So can we get the kill on this guy? Come on, come on! Ugh, just track damage and someone else gets him, but that's okay, you know. Except with this, that you're probably not going to rack up a huge number of kills. Uh, you're mainly there for support, for assistance, for tracking people. I try a speculative shot there, because why not? We reload quite quickly and we have no shortage of ammunition. Um, and... Yeah, so tracking people, um, letting the rest of your team do damage, etc. Uh, one thing to note about the ammo loadout with this gun, uh, it's the same on the Electo, you get your high explosive ammunition, which of course is this one, and you can see it's you know it's only 280 damage. It's only 87mm gun, I mean, yeah. Um, then you have two sorts of AP, and I would bother with neither of them. Um, why? Well, the only, I mean, one of them's premium, has slightly higher uh, penetration, but neither of them have particularly good penetration. The only reason I can see you using them is if someone was right up in your face and you wanted to defend yourself, but you've got a 10 second reload. So if you have to switch ammo types and if you have to do it in sort of that kind of desperate situation, then that's not optimal. Um, the penetration on the premium ammunition isn't very good anyway, so don't bother with that. And you can't really use it at long range because the armor penetration value of armor piercing drops off with range. So you might as well just stick with the high explosive, that's my opinion, and just lob shells at them. Anyway, the game in question. 
We're ten five up. Um, and our VKs just asked, where are the heavies? Which is a fair question to ask. Um, so the Excelsior we saw earlier on, uh, and he's racked up two kills. He's going to be a bit of a, prop, a bit of a nuisance, to be honest. Let's see if we can try and get a shot on this M7. That was close. Oh, it's just close. I mean, the M7 has no armor, but this gun has very little splash radius. So you know, there we go. Them's the brakes, and we try and get a shot on him, but he's already dead. Um, so we're 11-5 up. We're six tanks ahead. This is grand. What could possibly go wrong? Well, have you noticed the mediums, heavies, tank destroyers, all that jazz? Most of our team protecting the base. Yeah, it's one of them. So there are three tanks. We have three tanks moving in on their base. And there's that Excelsior, and I have no shot. Now, you could argue that maybe I should move at this point to get a shot on the Excelsior. The problem is the gun arc on this uh, gun is not very good. It's quite flat. So in order to actually get a shot on the Excelsior, I would have to move a lot. I'd have to move to either D1, which is obviously not a very good choice, or somewhere like D9. And by the time I get there, whatever's going to happen is going to have happened. So I'm just going to stay put. Uh, you will notice, however, that the range on this gun is pretty damn good. Uh, and that's the same on the Sexton, the tier below. So you'll notice that, Ale that Excelsior has racked up another kill, so now we're only four tanks ahead. Uh, the T-28 has also racked up a kill. And I keep telling the team, just hang on, all go together, and then just rush them, basically. If you trickle in one at a time, then you give the enemy team time to pick you off one at a time. If you go all together, you saturate them with targets, they just can't pump out enough shots to take you all down. So, um, we the two tanks at D5, they're just waiting. I have a look at this panzer. He's got a kill, but looks like he's AFK. Uh, he's not going to move for the rest of the game, so we're effectively only three tanks ahead. Um, so these guys at D5 are waiting for the rest of our team to get there. Our VK has a damaged engine, uh, so he's a bit pedestrian. The VK is not very fast at the best of times. Um, and these guys are just going to move up and spot things. So, hello, wow, you are a pro KV-1 player, still at base. It's, it's difficult to be too critical. I mean, always bear in mind, this is only a tier 5 game. This might be the first heavy tank this chap has ever played. So, let's cut him a bit of slack. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Um, ooh, artillery. We'll see if we can nail him. Boom. Ha! Ah, kill stealing like a boss. That Excelsior has racked up another kill. So has the T-28. We're suddenly only three tanks ahead. Although, as I say, one of ours is AFK, so that's effectively two. I've just lost another one, that T28, he's a right nuisance, he racks up another kill. So, oh, our VK takes out the Excelsior. And I just keep shelling this area, because we reload comparatively quickly for artillery. We've got a load of shells. I don't think he's there anymore. Well, I didn't when this shot landed, because it obviously hadn't hit him. If the shot hits, you don't see the explosion. If it doesn't, you see the explosion. So I'm telling them again, attack, but do it together. You know, let's let's not let them pick us off. Because they have been racking up the kills. So I'm just waiting for uh, our three remaining tanks to move up. And the, the VK says his engine's damaged, so he's a bit slow. Alright, fair enough. And there we go. No, that KV-1 hadn't moved. Fair enough. Oh, well, let's keep shelling him. Yep, we track him, so any damage done to him at this point, we're getting assistance damage for, which is really nice. So maybe you're not going to get a huge number of kills when you're driving, especially some of the low-tier British artillery, because they don't do a huge amount of damage per shot, and they don't have a very big splash radius. But you can just consistently track people and damage them and annoy them. You can make them move, you can get assistance damage, and well, I'm actually quite liking the Birch Gun, I must admit. So this guy moves, can we get him, can we get him now? T28 is almost rubbish. Come on, I have a shot. Oh, we hit him, we hit him. He's not going to be looking too clever. 
He can't be on much health now. So we have another shot. And there we go. So that's two kills uh, in the Birch Gun. This is was actually my first class mastery game. Um, I got two kills, did about 600 to 700 damage. And on top of that, we had about another four or 500 assistance damage, something like that. I'll show you the... Um, the scorecards at the end. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed, even if it was an artillery game and they can be a little bit dull sometimes. Hope you enjoyed and I'll catch you on the next one.